Hello and welcome to this video. So we completed a simulation on one pair using a couple of notebooks and now we're at the stage to be able to put everything together in a script that allows us to run lots of pairs and see what the results are like. Now below the video you'll find the GitHub repository and in there you can find the link for this video to this inside bar sim.py. I've already created the script because it's pretty much entirely made up of all the code we've already done and I didn't think it was worth you watching me type it out all again or copy and paste it. So I'm going to talk through the script and a couple of the changes that I have made. So starting from the top we have our imports, our stop loss and take profit are 0.4 and 0.8, our entry percent is before. Now I've made a definition of buy seller none as 1 minus 1 and none so that we can replace all of the hard coded numbers in the code before with buy sell and none. The other thing I did was make this loss fraction which is always minus 1.0 and then the gain fraction as the take profit divided by the stop loss. This is so that if you want to change maybe the stop loss or the take profit amounts or even the entry percentage or something you just have to change them at the top of the file here and rerun the simulation to look at the effect of the results. But the idea was to stop having these values hard coded all over the place so we just have to change them in one place at the top of the file. So the direction function has just changed then with the buy and the sell. You know this, the get signal we know, the get entry stop is from the notebook again. I've always changed the ones and minus ones to buy and sells. The take profit we know, the triggered we know, the get end calculation we know. And we can see the process buy and sell where we have our gain, our loss fraction, our gain, our loss fraction here now. And then this code here is from the uh, moving average simulators. This is just to get our test pairs that we can append to our tradable list of pairs from the string. And now we move into the four hour candle thing. This is the code that we use to actually get our trades data frame. So I've kind of stuck some code from both notebooks together here because I think the bit at the bottom here with the trade next, trade end and trade start was in the second notebook. And this one was uh, in the first notebook. The thing to be careful of in here a little bit is the dropping of the NAs because when you do a shift obviously you end up with NAs. You need to make sure you take those out. So we do the processing, make all the signals, get ourselves a trades data frame here where the signal is non-none. Make the next time the trade end the trade start which we've covered obviously in detail and then drop the NAs and return something with the index reset to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 etc. Finally then we have an evaluate pair function which is exactly the same code as the end of the notebook in the previous couple of videos. I think that was the inside bar timings notebook where we just sum up our total and then return our total. So it's really simple actually and it's identical code pretty much to what we've been doing over the last few videos. Then we have our run which is similar to the MA sim run where we get our test pairs, loop through the pairs, get our instrument, load from our historical data. Hopefully you've loaded the new historical data with the numbers and not the strings. So we get our R4 data, our M5 data. Again you might want to use different granularities here, H1 and then using M5 or something like that. You just have to change them here. Then we get our trades from the get trades data frame and then evaluate the pair and print the score. And at the end we've summed up a grand total to see what the final score is of running through all of the combinations of major currency pairs that exist for this strategy. So with a drum roll all that remains really is to actually run the simulation and have a look what the results are like. So that ran in just under a minute. So we've gone through, I think, 21 pair combinations there using the five minute candles as a granularity of prices to step through over a two year period with a strategy based on four hour candles. And it took less than a minute to run 21 pairs. And this is also including the spread in the simulation as well. And I hope now you start to realize the power and advantage you have when you have this coding ability at your fingertips and you can start just testing out strategies in this way. So you can see from the result that we have a very negative result. And now the question is, is how do you want to interpret this result? So I'm going to tell you how I would interpret it just looking at it very quickly. The first thing I notice is the Swiss franc is generally very negative, which tells me that probably this strategy, if it's suited to anything, is suited to currency pairs which have more volatility. The Swiss franc is usually a good litmus test for crossing strategies and things like this or momentum strategies because it tends to be very, very mean reverting, which means it fails miserably usually on any of those other strategies. However, despite that and taking out the Swiss franc from here, we still have quite a range of positive and negative results. And that tells me that the strategy is essentially random. So my conclusion, unfortunately, from this strategy is it's pretty much potluck. And the blog post that we're seeing showing one or two currencies that are positive, yes, these occurrences are positive at the moment, but there are enough negative currencies and no real pattern in there to suggest that it's nothing other than random chance. And long term, the strategy will probably fail. 
However, on the positive side of things, imagine if you didn't have the skills and the information available to be able to run some kind of test like this and find out this information. And the issue and the reason I'm doing this course is because so many people don't have these skills and therefore a lot of people lose and this is why you see this 75% and above other people are losing because they take all of the material that's presented at face value and never test it thoroughly enough. Anyway, we've come a long way now with the course. We've covered the simulation, the loading of data. There are two bits that I want to give you before finishing the course. The first one is we're going to go through how to calculate some of the classic indicators in Python and we're going to build ourselves a small web dashboard that updates these indicators live. Once we've done that, we're then going to move on to building the actual live trading bot. So thanks very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the process of simulating this and I hope it's stimulated uh, your own ideas and also methods and also helps you in your own simulation. Uh, any questions, comments, welcome as always. Otherwise, see you in the next video. Thank you very much.